Virgo, welcome. And welcome back to Heretic Owl Tarot. So we are talking about uh, April. <laughs> what? Um, I'm sorry. I know. I said it, I said I was going to say it every month that I'm just shocked <laughs> by how fast they go. So um, I am though. Oh, oh. Um, apparently I'm a little hard on my tarot cards. I'm so sorry. Anyway, um, we're using the black tarot this month. I love this deck. <laughs> um, but interestingly enough, I was actually going to use a different deck this month, but, um, I had to move this deck in order to get to <laughs> the other deck. And as soon as I picked this deck up, it was like immediately connected um, to my heart space. Like, you know, when you plug something in and you hear the, the chime or whatever, that's how it felt. <laughs> so I'm definitely very like kind of clear sentient. Like, you know, I feel things more in my body. Um, that might be my Virgo moon, but, um, anyway, so I was like, hell yeah, let's, let's do this then. Um, so as with our monthly readings, we do a four card spread, Center position is the current energy. To the left of that is any um, potential blocks. Underneath is advice for clearing the block. And then to the left of that is kind of the energy that you're heading into next. Um, I don't shuffle reversals into the deck, but um, if the card falls out in the reverse, we'll take it that way. Um, the cards do actually need to fall out of the deck. If they flip over in the deck, we'll just flip them back over and keep it moving. And I feel like I'm missing something. Oh, my intention is just for one card to come out at a time. But if two come out together, we'll take two. Any more than two, though, we'll, we'll put it back because we just want the message to be super clear. <laughs> um, <laughs> my dog's going crazy. Um, I hope March has gone well for you, is treating you well. Um, so let's get into it then. What is the current energy? Okay, now all of a sudden my hands don't want to work. What is the current energy for Virgo? I also, like, all of a sudden I cannot catch my breath. So, um, and I haven't even been doing anything except for sitting here. <laughs> So I just, I wonder like, you know, if you guys just kind of have a lot of stuff going on, um, maybe just kind of feel a little overwhelmed um, where, you know, like you may be kind of struggling to kind of take a deep breath yourself. I'm going to take a couple deep breaths here. So if you, if you want to take intentional deep breaths with me, by all means, feel free. What is the current energy for Virgo? See, that helped. <laughs> Taking those deep breaths definitely helped. This looks to be more in the reverse, so I'm gonna take it that way. We have the Three of Swords and the Star. Yes, <laughs> Virgo. Let me, let me see. Are these straight? Because my, you know I have OCD issues. Oh, now this whole thing wants to, sorry. Okay. Let's move this up. In owly. <laughs> okay. Thanks. <laughs> so we have the three of swords in the reverse, the star card, the seven of wands at the bottom of the deck. This is beautiful. That could also be why too, like, you know, just kind of feeling this need to take a couple, take a couple deep breaths because, you know, the three of swords in the upright generally talks about disappointment, rejection, 
you know, I mean, there's this sword literally cutting somebody in half, right? Like it's, um, it doesn't feel good. You know, swords have to do with our thoughts and the way that we are perceiving a situation. So with it being in the reverse, this is you kind of coming out of that energy. This could even be, I'm getting this message about how, um, you know, like things had to fall apart in order to come together. Like with this being in, the, you know, if, if it were upright, this would signify to me that, you know, kind of this tearing apart is happening. But with it being in the reverse, I'm just kind of getting this message about, you know, kind of things coming together. So with it being paired with the star card here, the star card um, is the card of Aquarius. So um, you could be, you could have an Aquarius in your circle or around you. Um, but, you know, the star card talks about faith and hope. And, you know, I always kind of see the star card as being that space between the physical 3D world and the cosmos, like, you know, the, the spiritual realm. Um, and, you know, kind of that space between where our manifestations and our prayers hang out, right? Because we need kind of the power of those two to come together in order to kind of manifest something into our physical, physical world. I don't know why I'm so like hyper fixated on this being straight. <laughs> I haven't been like that in any other video. So again, you know, like, <laughs> um, you know, maybe you are paying attention to details. Like maybe you are being hypercritical of details too. I don't know. Um, we're, we're, we're flowing with it though. And then we have the seven of swords at, or excuse me, the seven of wands at the bottom of the deck. This is, you know, um, kind of taking a more defensive posture. This is really kind of standing your ground. And it's almost like I kind of get this energy of accepting nothing less than like not settling. This could even be just an energy that you've been in for a long time. You know, like maybe you have felt disappointed or, you know, like maybe just kind of feel like things haven't been working out. Um, you know, like the things that you have hoped for, the things that you have been trying to manifest, you know, like maybe again, it's just kind of been a journey that you've been on for a little while, but this is, you know, I mean, it's perseverance, right? Like, it's also, to me, I see the Seven of Wands as, you know, really kind of standing in your own power. Like, you know, the Wands talk about action and communication, right? And the general depiction or the traditional depiction is that there's like six Wands coming up at somebody who has one Wand that they're kind of defending themselves against um, the other Wands. I still have black paint. Um... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, you know, and I always kind of see those other six wands as like, you know, other people's opinions or other people's fears and doubts that they're just kind of projecting onto you, right? And you're kind of having to like fight those things off. So again, you know, really just kind of standing in your power. We have the Knight of Cups, um, which talks about, you know, I mean, the cups have to do with our emotions. Um, you know, this could be like an offer coming into you that you feel good about. It could have to do with your job because we have the Knight of Pentacles behind there. Um, but this is, you know, like they're generally messengers, right? So again, like just kind of, you know, it could have even been an apology, but, um, I get more of like, you know, this, this, um, whatever you have been kind of holding out on, you know, it kind of seems to be coming into the physical 3D world now. So you're starting to see it and, you know, you do feel good about it. The Knight of Pentacles um, is kind of the slower moving. Pentacles, very much your energy, right? It's, it's earth. Um, but, you know, the Knight of Pentacles talks about dedication and commitment to whatever it is that, you know, like you're building as far as pentacles go. So this could have to do with your job, your career, 
even your, your business if you launched your own business. It could even have to do with your body and the routines that we we get into. Um, it could be just, you know, like what you are focusing your energy into. But again, you know, <laughs> the Knight of, of Pentacles talks about, you know, like a path that has you've been on for some time. It is a slower moving energy. So, you know, it takes time. We have the Ace of Wands behind there the spark, right? The spark of creativity or passion, right? So again, you know, like whatever this offer is that you've been kind of either fighting for, holding out for, been really kind of focusing your energy into, there it is, right? The chariot, you know, like this is beautiful, dude. Like it just, it seems like shit is moving forward for you. Finally, it like, and again, like that could be why, you know, it's kind of like now I can, um, now I can take a deep breath or maybe you just kind of feel like you haven't been able to exhale in some time, but the chariot is pretty quick moving. Um, but it's also, you know, kind of being universally guided, like, you know, you are being almost placed or um, positioned um, by, you know, the powers that be, whoever you believe in, you know, like if you believe in a, in a higher power, you know, I mean, it could be God, it could be source divine, your higher self. Um, it's kind of like, you know, they are kind of driving at this point. And in the blocked position, we have the 10 of swords and the moon. Eight of Pentacles, Eight of Cups, Temperance. The Ten of Swords, again with the swords, right? Like it's interesting because this is a lot of mental energy, right? And um, I know that, you know, like as Virgos, you know, you kind of get that rep of being, you know, kind of analytical and... Um, logical, you know, like just kind of seeing the processes. And this is very much that, right? Even though, you know, swords represent air signs, but this is, you know, it's almost kind of like being out of alignment because your earth, right? Your body, your, you, you have to do with the body and grounding yourself. So if you are too much in your head and too far outside of your body, that it's kind of like, you know, like perspective gets lost a little bit. I actually posted an energy update on March 26th that kind of has to do a little bit with, you know, just kind of recognizing the balance between the head and the heart. But um, because heart has to do with body, right? Head has to do with swords. So, or mind, or... Anyway, <laughs> um, so, you know, with this being in the blocked position, this could just be too much head energy. This could just be like too, too many what ifs. This could even be like trying to have too much control. But also with it being a 10, it's kind of like there's nothing else really to consider. Uh-oh. Oh. Sorry about that. Um, there's really nothing else to consider, but also just kind of recognizing how all of these what ifs, because we have the moon at the bottom of the deck and the moon talks about the, the things that haven't been brought to our awareness yet. It's, you know, kind of the things that happen in darkness. It's the subconscious. It's, you know, even ego, you know, like is what the swords represent because that's where our heads live, right? So it's the, the stories that we kind of tell ourselves and maybe, you know, like there is this energy that wants to, you know, kind of move forward and it's being blocked a little bit because there's so much head stuff going on. There's too many, like I said, like, you know, even, even if you think that, you know, every which way a situation could go great, but 
also, you know, like don't lose the, the magic, right? Because um, there is still a possibility for, you know, like something unexpected to come up. And if, you know, like you just kind of rest your decisions on, you know, like I'm already 50 steps ahead. Like I've already um, thought of and imagined and intuited every, every possibility that I can imagine, right? But really you haven't, right? <laughs> and really are, are those scenarios coming from a place of ego or are they coming from a place of, you know, like your heart space, right? Because... Are they positive or negative? Have you thought of both? But, you know, the moon is here. Um, and again, with this being in the blocked position, it's kind of like, you know, like blocking um, the magic from happening, blocking the unknown from coming in. And this could even, again, like have to do with work. It's interesting that, you know, um, pentacles kind of keep showing up like behind a couple cards at the bottom of the deck. So even if this does have to do something with your money or something to do with your finances or security that way, um, or even if it does have to do with your health, right? It's kind of like, again, you know, like there's, there's too much head stuff going on <laughs> and not enough, um, you know, kind of feeling into the body and, you know, kind of getting a consensus from both. What is the advice for Virgo? Because even, you know, like the Ten of Swords is always, you know, like it's kind of like the card of like defeat. It's like mental, you know, defeat though, right? Like it's kind of like, you know, and I, and I am a pro at this, but just mentally kicking your ass, like, you know, just beating yourself into a pulp um, mentally, Right. And how, you know, like that does block, um, um, the, the manifestations from coming in. I was trying not to repeat myself because I do that a lot. <laughs> this is actually up here. So what is the advice? I'm not going to take that because. I feel like that was operator error. That was the four of pentacles though. What is the advice for Virgo? What is the advice? Did you see how that kind of like we have the four of wands in the reverse is everything okay and then the king of cups at the bottom of the deck This to me, you know, so the, the four of wands, the four of wands talks about, you know, stability and foundation. It also talks about, you know, like harmony, union, right? Again, you know, with the wands, I don't know if I actually talked about wands in anyway, sorry. <laughs> the wands, I think I did. Anyway, the wands talk about action and communication, right? Yeah, because we were talking about the seven of wands. Oh my gosh. Thank you. <laughs> and, um, you know, when we get to the four, it also talks about discipline, right? Like, um, kind of just the discipline that it takes in order to build a solid foundation and build, you know, kind of security, Right. So with this being in the reverse, it's kind of like I'm getting this energy of um, 
almost kind of flipping your perspective as far as like what is security and foundation for you. Um, this almost looks like uh, an exclamation point to me too. Just, you know, because the, the Four of Wands upright is kind of like these stairs up to... Um, that light and now that I'm looking at it that way it's almost kind of like I'm getting this feeling of you know the the light at the end of the tunnel is closer than you think it is and even with it being like you know like I said like you know kind of seeing it as an exclamation point like there seems to be um like I'm just not getting like a negative feeling from it because I know like you know generally like the reversals can you know kind of signify the opposite of the energy but I'm just not getting like I'm not getting the energy of instability or um you know like I just get this feeling of like again you know this this light at the end of the tunnel could actually be closer than you think that it is um and, you know, there's this kind of like level of excitement there. We have the King of Cups at the bottom of the deck. And the King of Cups um, is a master of their emotions, right? I mean, like they are deeply connected to their emotions. There's, you know, there's more, um, you know, I mean, just talking about the heart space even, right? Like kind of letting that be the guide. And when we talk about kings, you know, they are leadership positions, right? I mean, like it talks about um, your kingdom and, you know, the people around you. So, you know, like this could just be, you know, kind of leading by your heart. And that could even be why, you know, there's kind of this exclamation point or just kind of this feeling of, you know, things being closer to stability than maybe you think that they are. Or again, even, you know, that first message that kind of came through was just kind of like changing your perspective on um, what would bring security and what a foundation, a sturdy foundation would look like for you. We have the Ten of Wands at the bottom of the deck, and this talks about um, burden, you know, like kind of, um, but it's also movement. It's like, you know, because they're usually carrying the Ten Wands on their back. Um, I also see it as being um, experience. Like, you know, um, again, like, you know, with the Wands being action and communication, like, you know, when you put action into something, you gain wisdom, you gain experience and knowledge of that thing, right? It's also, um, you know, like a, a reminder about kind of delegating work. Like, you know, if you feel like you're carrying the majority of the burden and if there is a possibility of delegating things off of your plate, it's kind of a, a reminder or an invitation to do that. But then we have the justice card and the fool behind that. So, you know, even... Even this, you know, kind of like I was saying, getting into your body and kind of letting your heart into the decision making process, right? Um, you know, it's almost kind of like it it changes um, this burden and maybe it, it does kind of create um, just like a natural purge of the things that, that no longer need attention or you know the energies run out on those things and you know maybe we're kind of gripping on to them but uh we have the justice card behind there and justice this is libra um but you know it's it talks about balance and fairness 
This could have to do with like a court case. I mean, it could have to do with something legal, doesn't have to. But, you know, it's almost kind of like by, by kind of switching the focus, things kind of start to balance out here and creates room for there to be this new beginning. Like this brand new energy, you know, like comes in. We have the lovers behind there, the three of wands. This could also be, um, we're, I'm shuffling for, <laughs> um, for the card of, you know, like what's next, what's, what's the energy that you're heading into. Um, but with the four of wands being in the reverse, it could also be that, um, you know, because it's interesting that the current energy is in the reverse, the advice is in the reverse. So this could even be a relationship or a partnership that um, maybe, you know, you've spent a lot of men mental energy on. And this could even be, you know, just kind of recognizing that, again, the, the energy has left the, the relationship. You know, whether that's a romantic relationship, whether that's a platonic, you know, kind of friendship, whether that's, you know, the work that you're doing. It could even just be the company that you work for, right? Like, um, you know, the, the energy that was allotted for it has been used. And, you know, like it's kind of, it may be time to move beyond. I mean, of course, I know that's easier said than done. But with the four of wands being in the reverse, I was just kind of, I was just getting that message as well. It's too many cards. Because again, you know, like this could be that, you know, like just having this hope that, you know, something, you know, like it would work out. Maybe it just hasn't been working out. And, you know, there may be just kind of a separation that needs to occur. Even just, you know, like um, exploring your, exploring your options. And then with the King of Cups that was showing up at the bottom of the deck, it's kind of about like getting clear about how you feel not about you know you've already established every thought that you have about the situation so the king of cups asks us to get really clear on how we feel about it the king of cups is also like very intuitive very psychic empathic however you know like whatever other word can describe being you know connected into you know, your, your, uh, heart. <laughs> what's next for Virgo? What's, what's next for Virgo? And again, like what, doing cartwheels. We have the Eight of Wands, and there's that Seven of Wands. But they came out in the reverse. You know what's interesting? When, when the reverse card, when the cards come out in the reverse, when we're talking about um, the energy that we're, we're coming up to next, I always, I see it as um going back <laughs> like <laughs> um it's kind of like you know you're not necessarily moving out of this energy yes i am still very much i guess i don't have to do i don't know uh, for some reason okay I'm going to have to move my owly. Here we go. You can go down here. 
there. Okay. Okay. So, like I was saying, <laughs> thank you for sticking with me through this um, clear display of OCD. Um, so, as I was saying, when the cards in the, the what's coming next energy come up in the reverse, it's almost just kind of like this circle, <laughs> right? Because if they were, if they were this way, right? The Eight of Wands would be heading out of this energy, but they're not, right? And not to mention, it's a progression. We go from the seven to the eight. So even that, right? So whatever is happening here, whatever is happening, you know, between the block and the advice, even, you know, like whatever's going on in this current energy, um... There seems to be some sort of either like um, revel re revelation, some sort of clarity that comes. And maybe that's because the King of Cups energy showed up, right? And and it asked you to get more into your body. And um, what is, you know, like kind of asking yourself, like, what is feeling good in my body, right? And whatever the answer is to that, it's kind of like... It throws you right back into, um, you know, like either wanting to work something out, maybe even just kind of trying things a different way. We have the Ace of Cups at the bottom of the deck. So it even, you know, like there's this new found, um, like, I mean, your cups are over, your cup is overflowing, right? Your cup is full. You have this, you know, kind of newfound love for something, you're feeling good about it. The seven of wands, you know, we talked about it, but you know, it talks about um, perseverance and kind of standing your ground, right? And then the eight of wands is kind of fast moving communication. Like something is happening very quickly. And again, I'm not like getting the opposite energies from these cards. It's almost kind of like, you know, maybe you do let your guard down a little bit. And maybe that's why the seven of wands is in the reverse. Um, you know, like you could just be loosening your grip a little bit. And that can, you know, kind of open the flow of energy then, right? Like if you've been kind of blocking it by holding on a bit too tight. So we did have the four of pentacles that fell out all awkwardly. And I put it back in the deck. That does talk about holding on too tight, right? <laughs> um, so, you know, by loosening your grip a little bit, it just, it allows that energy to kind of start flowing forward or at least flowing at all. And then the eight of wands in the reverse, um, you know, and even it's kind of like running behind the seven. And that's what I mean, right? It's kind of like by opening or just loosening that grip, whether it is just you loosening it or you're just like, fuck it, I'm YOLO. I'm, you know, Jesus, take the wheel, right? <laughs> like, please don't do that in real life, though. Be safe. But um, it's, you know, like this energy all of a sudden can just like come in fast. Because it is, it is interesting that, you know, the Eight of Wands... Um, it is still an energy that is heading in this direction. And then, like I said, the Ace of Cups, we have the Five of Swords, the Empress, the Lovers again, the Nine of Cups. The, be careful. <laughs> be careful with this head stuff, you know? The, the Five of Swords talks a bit about um, you know, competition, conflict. Um, it's kind of, you know, like this energy of like almost trying to outwit somebody. But just be careful of that, right? Like, what is your intention? Are you intending to be manipulative? Or are you just really using your brain to kind of get what you want? Um, and, and, you know, again, it comes down to intention, are you thinking clearly or are you thinking that it's it's a game, right? <laughs> like, you 
you know, I mean, competition isn't necessarily a bad thing unless, again, you know, like the intention is to win at all costs. Like you have, you don't even understand, you don't even know what you're winning. You don't even know what you're doing, right? Like, so again, just kind of getting clear, but then we have the Empress behind that. The Empress um, is a Taurus card, I believe, um, but this is divine feminine energy, right? It's about the flow. It's about being in flow. It's about, you know, fertility and, but fertility in the sense of birthing opportunity and abundance into your life. I mean, she's generally depicted as being pregnant, but it's the energy of the divine feminine. So it's not necessarily female or male. It's the energy of the card, right? So it's allowing things to flow it's allowing, you know, like opportunity to kind of birth into your life. We have the lovers, you know, I mean, this could have to do with a relationship. I mean, you know, like surface level, that's what the lovers is. But on a deeper level, this is, you know, um, balancing the masculine and feminine energies. It's understanding that you need the flow, but you also need the um, initiation and action of the the masculine, right? So it's kind of like yin and yang. It's understanding the balance of those things. And then we have the nine of cups, which is wish fulfillment. This is you feeling like, you know, you are getting exactly what you wished for, exactly what you need. Couldn't feel better. Couldn't feel happier, right? And this, this is you, this is individual, right? When we get to the nine, it's you feeling good about yourself and what you've done. When we get to the 10, that's when we start, you know, like the 10 opens it up to family, community, and, and everybody else, right? Beautiful. And this is something that's already, you know, kind of in the works, right? Like, I mean, this is the energy that you started with. So... You know, the advice here, again, and I feel like, I don't know if it was you guys, that there seems to be this continuous reminder about getting out of your head. Um, and like I said, I, I can understand how difficult that could be for a Virgo, but even, you know, like with the lover showing up, right? It's, again, like the balance of the head and the body. Masculine is definitely very head energy, logic, right? Practical. The body is, you know, like love and how do I feel about this thing? And, you know, like needing to water, you know, like the the masculine would be the seed. The woman or the feminine would be the water and how both of those things are needed in order to um, grow a flower. Right. So um, I don't know, you know, again, like it's just this. <laughs> constant reminder about getting into your body and it does seem like that is starting to to change here because the only two positions that the the swords came up in is the reverse here and this block here but everything else is like action communication right it's moving forward This could even be, just really quick to wrap it up, this could even be that um, it's no longer a time to think about, it's more of a time to act. Like, we can think about things until we're blue in the face, but we're not actually going to get any answers until we actually put, like, start doing the thing, until we start acting towards the thing, whatever it is, right? whatever this, you know, star is, like, maybe this is even just a, a message about like starting to move towards what you believe this star to be for you. Beautiful. And I am going to leave it there. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> and of course, I would appreciate it if you subscribed. I am trying to get to 500 subscribers so I can like post in the community instead of having to post like little short videos. Also follow me on Instagram because I did actually start posting on there. It's kind of like a hodgepodge. 
between YouTube and my Etsy store, but I would love it if you checked me out over there too. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.